like in what situation, I guess, are um, are they? Do students usually tell the stories? I think when you're a freshman is when you mostly tell the stories. I think during master plan, when everyone moves in and you're getting to know each other, they say, "Well, did you hear about this or did you hear about that?" Mm -hmm. I think it's mostly when you're a freshman and you're living on campus for the first time, you tell these stories, and then as you get older, you're just kind of like, "It happened." So. Do you believe in the possibility of ghosts at all? Not really. <laughs> okay. And have you heard about the ghost stories here at Western? I've heard about the one in uh, Potter Hall. So what is the story that you heard about Potter? Uh, something about somebody was killed in there. Or okay. That's where they didn't hit, hit a lot of it. Okay. When and how did you first hear about any of the stories at Western? Like. I think I first heard when I was a freshman living in Gilbert and I think one of the other girls in my hall brought it up and we went and we asked our RA about it. We had heard that there was ghosts in Schneider and this was when Schneider had not been renovated. So, and Gilbert's right across from Schneider so you kind of see it at night and we had heard that some kids had gone over there and saw a ghost and were caught trying to sneak in the window by the University Police Department, so. Do you believe in ghosts or yeah. do you think it's... Okay, I just didn't know. <laughs> I, love, I like that kind of stuff, so... What makes it intriguing? Just not anything about the unknown, really. I've heard that a girl killed herself and it's in the administration building in Potter and she'll roll pennies down the floor um, just to sort of play around with people. Why do you think that people tell the stories? Uh, well, I think they do it just, you know, like for adrenaline, for the fun of it. Because it is fun to be scared, you know? Yeah. Do you think any part of them are true or... I say, I don't think, I say all of them aren't true. Yeah. But I think there probably are some that definitely are true. Yeah. Do you believe in the possibility of ghosts at all? I'm pretty sure there are ghosts, actually. And um, why do you think the students tell the story? I think part of it is so that they're part of the in crowd. You know, when you first get here, you don't know, but if you're a student at Western, you know these stories. Everyone pretty much does. And I think also because ghost stories are something that are familiar to us, and when you go to college, everything's, you know, new. So it's something that you're used to hearing. You're used to being told ghost stories. You're used to being scared. So it's like, oh, well, they tell ghost stories here too, just like my parents told me ghost stories. So What stories have you heard? The Potter Hall story and the fan meter scaffolding story. With Potter Hall, I've heard so many different versions of her name. I've heard Diane, I've heard Penny, I've heard Tiffany even. Um, I don't know if she was abused or came from a bad home, but she tried to kill herself before they stopped her. She went off, they said, okay, she's fine, she can return to school, she won't try to kill herself. Apparently they were wrong, and she hung herself in Potter Hall, which is now administrative, but it was a dormitory. They saw her in the window and it was too late to get to her. The girl, Diane, you know, why do you think she would still haunt the place? I was thinking, well, maybe um, she just was really connected, like this was home to her, and, uh, and that was what keeps her here. This is Western's first residence hall, now an administration building, Potter Hall, named for Western Regent J. Whit Potter, built originally for 250 students, housed a huge um, cafeteria, dining hall, I mean, cafeteria slash dining hall. The girl's name was Diane. She was a young, troubled black girl who had had a history of suicide. She came in the fall, um, had a couple times had tried to kill herself. Other residents in the hall directors had stopped her before, and she had been banned from school. Came back in April, or she came back that next spring with a psychiatrist's note free and clear that she was sane and ready to go about school. Um, that April, um, hall director said her normal desk clerk had been out sick and there was a foreign student working the desk. He had called up to her room and said, All she could understand was, Come quick, come quick, girl in window. What had happened is that two boys, um, Friday night, quite drunk, coming back from a party, stopped and knocked on two girls next door to Diane um, that they knew, knocking on their window on the first floor saying, hey, come on out. Well, the girls wouldn't come to the window, so they went and knocked on Diane's window next door and saw Diane's shape hanging in the window. Um, they ran to the desk clerk, the hall director, um, through jumbled communication came 
and excuse me, did the knocking on all the doors, first floor to make sure everything was okay. Got to Diane's door and automatically knew something was wrong. Um, unlocked it and behind the door, Diane had hung herself with um, a handful of belts over the open pipes that ran through the building. Um, through the rest of the semester, um, students had, the hall director got random calls in the middle of the night. Students that hadn't been able to sleep because Diane had appeared to them at the foot of the bed or students saying, oh my gosh, I could have done something more. But that eerie feeling never quite left the building. Um, Diane, she goes by many names, Allison, Teresa, recently nicknamed Penny, has said to still reside here at Potter Hall. Um, her room, third window from the right, um, it's got the window, it's got the window blind shut right now. Um, I checked before I came up here so we can't look for any particular bodies hanging in the window. But um, I've walked past late at night when the door's been open because I used to work on the first floor. Um, and there's just an eerie feeling that comes out of that particular room. Um, Have you personally experienced any like ghosts here on campus? I haven't you? seen anything on okay. campus. No. Um, what's your favorite story of you've heard so far? Probably Penny because I like when the ghost stories interact with people. It makes it a little bit more fun give the reason why she's nicknamed Penny because she leaves pennies in all kinds of random places. Uh, Learning Service and it says that she, just one of the stories I remember very plainly, she was cleaning one of the rooms up on the fourth floor and she picked up a penny that was on the floor, put it on the corner of the desk, turned around, and there's another penny on the floor, same spot, and she picked it up, put it on the desk, cleaned the rest of the room, came back in that same spot there was a third penny so there she picked it up and put it with the other two pennies that were already sitting on the desk um, things like that coins will pop up when and how did you first hear about the stories here at um, I think it was around Halloween time my freshman year um, I was at an audition and we thought it'd be fun because we had a little bit of time left over we all sat in a circle and told ghost stories and turned the lights out and everything and people were telling me about some ones on campus and I thought it'd just be really fun because I had no cool ghost stories except for, you know, the ones where you like jump out and say, boo, you know. And do you believe in ghosts or the possibility of ghosts? I'm on the fan.